All right, in the previous video, um, we set up a an array, um, and we also showed how a structure was being used. Um, we done that by changing this uh, function signature here to um, populate this with more meaningful information. Happening here is um, we're getting the current system time that's seeding into a random function and uh, we are calling or I I'm sorry getting the current system time which is our seed we're seeding our you know the random function and then we're getting a random number here um, that is then being passed into all of these functions so this first function it already has its signature correct um, which is an integer here so we're going to dive down into this and um, by first observations here we're gonna we're gonna close this first observations here um, this looks to be a mess um, certainly if I was coming in having no knowledge of software reverse engineering especially doing uh, in this case this is uh, C++ classic C++ reverse engineering um, you'll see why that is in a bit um, I would have no idea what was going on here you have this um, new operator that's happening here that is then being passed into a function and then you have this type of uh, um, this type of inf information where it's being used with parentheses and then there's parentheses around two variables here that um, happen to be the the same variable with the random number that we passed in um, to this function earlier and then here um, the the variable plus C and the same type of type of deal right so having knowledge of C++ reverse engineering I immediately know that this is allocating um, uh, enough space for some type of class and what these are are virtual function calls uh, for this class um, and these are the variables that are being passed in so this is going to be essentially a this pointer um, like that um, so and this is going to be a most likely a constructor um, for whatever class this is being set up as uh, so if we go into this then we see earlier we talked about you know whenever we see this type of um, information being presented most likely it's going to be a structure or a class um, and Ida Pro structures and class kind of go it they're one of the same in Ghidra you do have the concept of a structure and you do have the concept of a class and what I mean is uh, so Ghidra recognized that this was an actual pointer that was being passed into this so if I right click on this I can create a structure and it's going to create a structure for me um, that it is calling a struct a for auto if I find this and pull it up we can see that um, it has created a structure and um, uh, almost correctly assigned data types for each of the fields that is in the structure however we know uh, because I told you <laughs> that this is creating a uh, a class so instead of just having a structure representing the class um, we can set up a class that way we 
I, I discussed, you know, navigating um, around the program earlier and being able to quickly navigate to a, a section in the program based on labeling things and using the uh, go to feature. If we set up a class for this, um, we can um, set up a quick navigation for all of the function calls inside that that have referenced uh, for this class. Um, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So I'm going to hit Control Z. It's a great, um, great feature. If we edit this function signature, we can see that we have an option called calling convention and we have standard call or a this call. We are creating a class, so it's going to be a this call. We're not returning anything. Um, and we only have one argument that's being passed in, which is the this uh, pointer. So we do that. Um, and now if we right click, we can see that we have auto create class. Great. So we have created now a class as you can see here um, in our classes view of our symbol tree. And if we edit this, we have essentially what we had earlier for the structure, but in this case we have a class with member. Uh, this is the member data inside of the class. So um, we want to go ahead and try to uh, correctly identify what type of data types these are. Um, in this case, this is, uh, uh, it's currently showing us that this is a, um, uh, a value, but if we look over here, then we see that this is actually a, a pointer to a string. If we click on that, we can we can see it here. So, uh, we want to name it that character pointer. If we save that, then it'll correctly sh it uh, it'll correctly display that this is actually a string, um, and we'll call it hello instead of having it say character pointer. For these, we don't know what they are, um, simply because they're being set to zero. So we're not going to worry about that for now. And then here, um, we also know uh, that this is allocating some, some space and passing into what looks like a, uh, another constructor that's being saved here. Um, so what Ghidra has done is it has correctly correctly identified that this is a pointer, but it doesn't know what type it is, so it just put it as a void pointer. So, um, same type of thing as before. What we want to do is start from the top of this function and work our way down. Uh, before we leave though, it says hello from derived. So that's a clue on what class this actually is. So what we can do, instead of having this auto class, we can rename it to derived. So now we have derived and we also want to rename this to derived. So we have a um, a derived with a derived class, this pointer, and this is going to be a constructor. So we're going to rename this. to construct. Okay, so let's jump into this and see what this is. Um, 
and we can see that uh, this is pointing to or, or this um, is a pointer that's pointing to a pure virtual table. So what's happening here, this derived constructor or this derived class is inheriting from a base class. So this is going to be a base. Um, we're just going to call it base. For now, there we go. I think I actually added um, a note instead of changing this the first time. So we're going to call that base. And we're going to do the same type of thing where we're going to choose this as a this point or this call. It's going to be a void. We're going to get rid of that. And then we're going to create a class for it. This class, instead of having it as a nonsensical auto class, we're going to rename it to base. We're also going to rename this as base. And we know that this is a virtual pointer. So we're going to call it a uh, VPTR for virtual pointer and um, we're going to change that that way it looks a bit better we know that there's four pure virtual um, functions that any derived class um, that's inheriting from this can inherit. So we're going to set up a new structure called base V table. And we're going to set up four virtual function calls or vir four virtual function types. just like that all right and what we're going to do instead of having this as an undefined pointer we are going to have base v table pointer okay hopefully I didn't go too fast there um, this will be instead of construct derived like that okay now um, we can go back up one level and we can uh, retype this to be derived Uh, it's a drive pointer, sorry. And we can see that some magic has happened. However, I didn't assign this to be base. So this is also, if we go into here, this is really passing in, um, well, this entire pointer to this derived. However, um, what's actually being assigned in here is just the first offset, this virtual pointer. So um, this offset zero here is actually a base class and we'll call it base. Uh, just like that. So then, if we go back out, cool, we can see that 
um, we are now this is saying that the base class um, V pointer uh, whatever is pointing to uh, offset zero here is being called with these parameters so what, what do I mean by that so offset zero and offset C um, if we go back into this if it was purely virtual it would be these two so it would be uh, offset zero here and then offset C which would be this however in the derived class here we are reassigning the virtual pointer to point to this so what's actually getting called is this function at 1 2 a 8 and this function at 1 2 3 8 I want to now instead of having this as a generic base uh, I want to um, instead of having this as a generic base I want to uh, create a, uh, a virtual table for this guy So this is derived V table. Function pointer. And I've got one, two, three, four that I'm inheriting from base. And one, two, so I've got six total. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll copy the addresses. them in like that and I will replace that so we'll have that sort of thing and if I go back up here then we can see now exactly what's being called. Um, so here, um, the function at 112A8 is being called. Here, the function at 113A8 is being called. So that is a start. Um, obviously, we're not finished here because we have another class that's a nested class that's being set up uh, that we are going to pick up on the next video.